Hey everybody, welcome back to the van. Today I want to address a whole pile of questions I've got from another video that I did. In that video I talked about the handling characteristics of a van, how different it is to drive a van than driving a normal vehicle. I call it a normal vehicle, but what most people drive. Even a bigger SUV or a pickup truck. How's a van different? And I've got a lot of people who have contacted me asking me different questions. So I'm try going to try to do a quick video here addressing some of those questions. Now, the first thing is, how does a van handle on a normal everyday roadway compared to a regular vehicle? Normal roadway, it's going to handle fine. How does a van handle on a regular roadway? Uh, during a summer day with a humongous crosswind. That's different. That's a huge difference. In fact, this past, uh, well, actually two weeks ago, I went to Calgary, which is a three-hour drive. I was planning on taking the van, but they forecasted some winds the next day, so I took the Subaru. Wow, am I glad I did. Not only was it a white-knuckle drive and the Subaru going up, but on the way back, there was actually four semis that had been blown off the roadway and were laying on their sides. It was windy. And if I would have taken this van up in that wind, I would have either been in the ditch or I would have been sitting on the side of the road shaking because it would have been a rough drive. A van is just a big block. And when you have a side wind, it catches it. I have a medium roof. It's not a lot better than a high roof. A low roof isn't a lot better than a medium roof. But if it is a low roof, you'll catch a little bit less wind. It'd be more like driving a bigger SUV. But when you get a high roof van and you're not loaded down with a lot of stuff, it's going to catch every gust of wind and you're going to be fighting it as you're driving. So be aware. Beautiful roadway. It's going to handle pretty close to what a normal vehicle is across winds then you're going to have some issues how's a van in dealing with wet roads well, as long as you have good tires on your van wet roads other than a little bit increased braking distance and slower acceleration it's going to handle pretty much the same again if you have a crosswind that you're dealing with it's going to cause some more issues but it's not going to be huge with rain again with good tires how is it dealing with snow well, if it's just a light, fluffy snow, vans are great. In fact, a heavy van will just plow through the snow. It's no big deal. The big deal comes in when you're dealing with icy snow, wet snow, packed down snow, ice. A van will struggle, but so will any vehicle. In fact, I've been stuck in a small van. I've been stuck in a small SUV. I've been stuck in this van. I've been stuck in a 4x4. When it gets slick, when it gets really hard to get traction, you'll have issues. But with a van, adding what could be too much weight or what could be no weight at all, it's going to change how it handles. Add a crosswind. Add sitting on a bit of an angle. And if the van is a little bit top heavy, you're going to have a little bit different handling characteristics in a van. Now, one of the big questions I've got is people who have to drive vans for work, people who have to drive delivery vans, and people who have to drive service vans. Now, delivery vans is a whole thing on its own. Hopefully, your boss is smart enough to give you good tires. Hopefully, they're even winter tires if you're driving it in the winter. The big difference with vans, though, with delivery vans, is that as the day goes on, you start fully loaded. And by the time the end of the day comes, you are empty. So you're going to see handling characteristics change as the day goes on. So be aware of that and be careful with that because you don't want to have to uh, call your boss and say, uh oh, I just slid off the roadway. You don't want to have to uh, call the police and say, uh oh, I just slid into somebody. So be careful as the handling changes during the day. When I was growing up, my father was from the military. He was actually a transportation officer. And he always drove it into me that you always prepare for the worst when you're driving. You always made sure that you backed into a campsite so that the nose of the vehicle was pointing down the way that you wanted to go. 
you always parked it in such a way in your driveway or anywhere so that you could easily get out. A van is no different. In fact, a van, it may even be more beneficial to do that because with it being so big, it's hard to see around you, even with backup cameras, even with good mirrors. So if you're dealing with ice and stuff and you're starting to slip and slide, just think before you stop, think before you pull up somewhere and aim the van so that you can get out easily and that'll save you a lot of headaches. Now, what about with uh, big tires? What about with this? What about with that? Honestly, you can put on the biggest tires you want and they're not going to do any good. Winter tires, they'll, be, they'll make a big difference. One of the biggest things that I find in vans isn't the difference between the van and a vehicle. It's not the difference between this, that, and the other thing. The biggest difference I find in a van is how it's built and how much weight is in it. If you have a pretty empty van like I've got, it slips easily because there's no weight in the back end. I didn't build a heavy vehicle because I didn't want a heavy vehicle. So I put a couple bags of sand in the back. Not only is the sand there for the weight, but the sand's also there. I got an extra bag back there in case I need a traction aid. If you build a van, if you're building a camper van, don't put all the shelves up high and load them with heavy stuff. If you're putting uh, cupboards, if you're putting shelves or anything up high, don't put your canned goods up there. Don't put books up there. Don't put weight up there. Put your clothes up there so it's lighter. Keep your center of gravity as low as possible. Put your canned goods in the cupboards down by the floor. Put your books down by the floor to keep your center of gravity. Why? Because if you have a high center of gravity, you will start to slip. As you go around corners, you'll feel the back end kick out, especially if you have a rear wheel drive. You'll feel the thing tilting and sliding back and forth as you're going down different roads. If your center of gravity is lower, if your weight's down low, it'll be a lot easier to control in all conditions, but especially on icy and snowy roads. What's the biggest piece of advice that I can tell you? Drive defensively, drive a little bit slower than you would in a, what I call a normal vehicle, a daily vehicle. And remember, if you are living in your van, if your van is your home, remember, you don't always need to drive in bad weather. I see all these macho guys on YouTube and, and Instagram taking their $100,000, $200,000 vans that are all done up and driving through a massive blizzard or all through this mud and everything because they need to get to the next stop. Seriously, people, you have a house here. I've got all my clothes here. I have a washroom right here. I have a kitchen over there. I have a sink there. I have a furnace. Why do I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning in a blizzard to drive a block or two blocks or a mile or five miles or 50 miles or whatever? you don't need to. Likewise at night. I've seen so many videos recently of people in vans, ambulances, truck campers, RVs, where they're white knuckle driving down the road and they're like, we have to get to the next stop. It's another hour and a half and that's where we have to be tonight. Why? If the roads are that bad, if the handling is that bad and you're living in your van, Pull off the road and be safe. Simple thing. If you're doing it for work, that's a little different. You're going to hopefully have to be have a good boss, first of all. But you're hopefully going to be able to tell your boss, look, the roads are a nightmare. I can't drive in this. It's not safe. But if you're living in your van, just don't drive. You don't need to pull out if you've got a day's or two days worth of food at seven in the morning. You can wait to two in the afternoon when the sun melts the roads. You can go slower. You don't need to rush. Think people before you do these things. So that's about everything I wanted to cover. I'm getting off and starting to rant a little bit. So drive carefully, drive a little bit slower, drive cautiously, drive defensively, and hopefully that you have no problems in driving a van compared to driving what I call a regular vehicle. Talk to you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.